Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Hello, nasty. Hello, there. Hello. 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 Me, Jay, and Mark. Yes. yes. I said that like it's three people because I wanted it to be three people. <laughs> <laughs> it's you, me, and I. Yeah. So uh, this is weird. Uh, but I also, I also love it. Every time we do the Nick show and the Brink show, Jay introduces me as like the guest. I've been on like every episode, almost every episode of both shows at this point. And it's always like, and surprise, look who's here today. Well, I like <laughs> to say both of our names now because people don't seem to – like know our names or like they mix us up, you know? Yeah. So at the very beginning, I like to get the names, you know, if you're a first time listener, you don't know who's who. Yeah. No, but it's easy to mix up the voices and the names. You know what? Every time you do a funny joke, just say, that was Jay. That was funny, Mark. (laughs) Use our names as much as possible throughout the show until someone bashes their head through whatever medium they're listening to the podcast. (laughs) Um, So here's something weird. So, uh, uh, so we also say the name of the show constantly. Like, if you listen to those morning shows, they're like, this is Mike and Mike on the radio. So what do you think about the Knicks? This is Mike and Mike on the radio. They they keep doing that. Have you noticed I, that? They say it like every minute or two. Do you remember the rapper Mike Jones? No. Could there be a more generic named rapper? What the hell is this? What the hell? I, I don't know. This is an audio. <laughs> I'll share this with you in a second. Um, yeah, do you remember this? So he was a rapper, and his whole rap was always, uh, you should look him up and play him. Um, but, like, it would be the songs like, Who's Mike Jones? And it would be like, Mike Jones, Mike Jones, Mike Jones. He would just keep saying his I, th- I think it's Mike Jones. I forget. Is it Mike Jones? Uh, he just say his name throughout the entire song. It was, like a, it was I think, meant to be completely absurd. <laughs> that sounds great. It was actually pretty done pretty well. Let me guess. One hit wonder. He had a couple songs. Um, I don't even know if it was Mike Jones. What the, what's the name of it? Not Michael Jones. Michael J. Jones. Yeah, it would be a... <laughs> uh, who is Mike Jones? That would be, that would be the website. And he would always say, like, who's Mike Jones? Fine, look up Mike Jones. Look up a song. A song. Just any one of them. Okay, here's, here's what's weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Uh, So uh, I got a text. Well, I got a text that said, who's this? Um, that shouldn't be that weird. I mean, it's usually you don't get text saying, who's this? Right. Did the you weird thing, who's this? The weird thing is the name that came up with, who's this, was my wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, is something wrong with her phone? Um, so I write back, you get amnesia, Liz. A little while later, um, I don't know any Liz. And I'm like, this is a little odd. Did she get her phone stolen? I don't know. Um, anyway, so I look into my, you know, like I look into, I, I have the iPhone and all. Uh, I look into the details and I realize I have two phone numbers. I have, I have her work number. I have two work numbers for her and her, and her cell phone number. And one of her work numbers is listed as mobile number, which I'm not sure why. I'm not even sure how this I'm not sure about the, where the second, um, the second mobile number slash work number came from, but mm-hmm. it's like an area code that would be her work number. She lives, works in Jersey, a 201 number. And I'm like, oh, have I been texting her other work number? I don't know why I suddenly would be texting her other work number, um, but it still should be like her work number. Um, anyway, so I wrote, who's this? I wrote, after they said, I don't know any Liz, I wrote, who's this? Their response was Ray. Ray does not sound like my wife's name. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it's Liz, not Ray. I don't think she forgot her own name. Um, I wrote back, is this a 201 area code? Then I wrote, is this the number I'm texting? And I wrote the 201 random number. Um, what number am I texting? They wrote back, yes, LOL, that's my number. Um, I tried calling my wife on, the, on her cell phone number, um, which I realized, or her other cell phone number. She hasn't answered. So, uh... I don't really know where she is at this point. She's not home right now? No, she's in Florida right now. 
This sounds like one of those movies where like they just they steal her and wipe her identity away and it's like she never existed. And then yeah. it makes you go crazy. Like you're gonna come home from work tomorrow and all the pictures in your apartment are, are gonna have her removed from them. This is like the movie Vanishing or something like that. I forget. I don't think that is it was the Vanishing. Be- Which movie is there a movie where this happens? Yes. And then like, yeah, you go through all your photo albums, all the pictures are gone, and like then then you you know, you talk to your friends and they have no idea who she is. No, sir, no. You just moved in here over the summer by your lonesome. You, it, you didn't have any kids. What are you talking about? Yeah, you're knocking your neighbor's door. It's always just been you and your two kids. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I was, I was saying maybe the kids disappear also. Maybe like everyone disappears. I'm just like some crazy loader who moved, moved into the house. And they're like, why is this single man buying this house by himself? Turns out uh, you've just been marathon streaming Brink of Sanity for the last eight years and you've mentioned <laughs> the entire thing. Everything about everything about it is not real. I'm like I live in the Matrix. <laughs> um, so that's where I am, though. Uh, she, so I was away in Florida this past weekend. That's why I was not on the Nick show. Um, my in-laws were there. They're there for like a couple weeks. She went down with the kids. She's there for a full week with the kids. I because because of work had to come back earlier, so I am alone now. Um, and now I'm texting with someone named Ray about where my wife is. <laughs> I don't know. Like I now I texted. I don't know how I would have. I don't even know how I would have texted the 201 number because I was just responding to a chain of texts from her. And suddenly I get this, that's why, who's this thing? I don't know how I would have even done that. I don't know what the hell, what joke the iPhone is playing on me. And I don't know how this Ray got my wife's work number. Well, I guess. This is not really, this is not really a comedy bit. I'm just sharing. Some kind of, yeah, some, no, it's I, kind guess, of weird. I guess next episode, let us know if your wife ever turned back up. I will. And so I, then I texted a, uh, my wife's the, – the, the, her, her actual cell phone number with the, hey, is this 201 number? Uh, was that your work number at some point? I don't even know how I got into, entered in my phone if it wasn't her work number. <laughs> this guy Ray is going to like steal my wife. Is she in your phone as Liz or as Liz's wife or – So she's in the phone with like – I like I, I have her maiden name in there and then I then at one point I added my last name to, like, the last name to it. But either way, like it comes up when you look at it, it just says Liz um, without the okay. full name. No, so I, I thought maybe it, I texted the different Liz to my phone, but I, that wasn't it. No, I was saying it would be really funny if to just go into other people's phones when they go to the bathroom and change their spouse's name to like some dude. <laughs> that would actually be a funny thing to do at a bar. Yeah, that'd be kind of funny. Like next meetup, just like everyone swaps phones and switches out their <laughs> significant other's name. You uh. You're texting like they're like not, like you change you change uh like Liz now is their phone number is nine one one. Hello, what do you mean this is an emergency? I'm just calling my wife. What do you mean? I, I, no, she's not, I can't find her. No, no, I'm not saying she's missing. Why why are you guys overreacting to this? Like, <laughs> if any uh, listener wants to do that to their friend's spouse, you could use the show's number six three one six seven six one one eight one. Speaking of which, we got a voicemail. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, which is amazing because we haven't announced the voicemail number in about. Three and a half months. Is it from uh, the uh, Illuminati guy? Uh, let's see. It's queuing up. What's up, Jay? So this is for the uh, break of sanity. This is Frank. Just was hearing you guys talk about the uh, 9-11 thing. So oh, God. <laughs> let's say this. All right, so I know that all right, the whole inside job thing is probably a little too much. So, so let's just go based off of what um, George Bush and his regime said, right? So let's just say that, okay, it's, it's everything went the way they said it went, right? And George Bush and his regime, FBI, CIA, whoever it was, they knew 9-11, they knew there was a threat looming, right? They knew there was a threat looming, and then they either were late letting everybody know about it or were slow about actually trying to resolve this threat and then the threat happened but they knew there was a threat and the threat could happen aren't they responsible for it happening because they were there they knew that it was coming they had abilities to try to you know do stuff to like you know, you know, like a, all the stuff that he did after 9-11 where it's like, oh, cold orange, cold red on the airplane, blah, blah, blah. He didn't do any of that stuff. 
and they and then from what I know, it's been a while, but from what I know on CNN, they admitted that they knew and didn't do as much as they should have to prepare for it. I don't know. In any other job, you're held responsible for that. I'm just saying. Bye. All right. Thank you for the voicemail. So he's so saying- my first my first comment on that, if I want to just jump in there, mm-hmm. uh, I really think you did a good job of changing your voice for that phone call, Jay. <laughs> um, it was really good. Are you happy? Um, that I wish you would do more impressions of other voices on the show. I applaud you. Clap, clap. Are you happy that 9-11 gets brought up like every two episodes? Oh, my on God. No offense to the caller because I would make fun of Jay on this also. What the, what the fuck are you talking about? No, he said there's no conspiracy. He was, he was they're, saying, they're responsible because they got warnings that something might happen and something happened? Well, he's saying that they got warnings that something might happen and they didn't really act on the warnings and they didn't do anything about it. So he's asking if they're responsible because they kind of ignored the warnings. In fairness, they probably get warnings about shit all the time. Like you only hear about the warning, this, this, these warnings that that came up. And there were some ones that you look looking back with twenty twenty hindsight, you're like, oh, they should have been a little more aware. Mm-hmm. But uh, they probably get warnings. You don't hear all the noise they get. So you think they should not be held accountable? Well, I, I don't think when he said held like, like, do you want to put him in jail for this? I think they they held accountable. They kick him out of office. He didn't do a good job as president. Well, that's I don't think true. I don't think that's like a, I don't think he committed a crime. By not doing a good enough protecting the nation when the warnings came up, I don't think he. This wasn't. This wasn't like a willful negligence on his part. Okay, fair enough. You, you just you. You disagree? I don't know what he knew, so I can't. Like, if he, I know exactly what he knew, Jay. So I can comment on it perfectly. No, I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know. It depends what kind of warning he got. If well, they all said, we like, know is we know there was a lot of things that you connect the dots. You know there was an FBI agent um, in Minnesota who was who was trying to get access to one of the hostages, one of the uh, terrorist computers because he thought that he said they were he thought they were doing the terrorist activity was going to happen soon. He couldn't get access. That you know, as far as Bush, there was a memo from Condoleezza Rice saying Bin Laden determined to fly planes into building. Um, there were a bunch of things out there, but they also probably get a lot of these things that don't. Nothing happens also. Right. He probably he, at the end of the day he took his eye off of uh, Bin Laden and was focusing on Iraq and he was wrong about this um, and that's why he's a shitty president. Um, and there's a lot of things I think he did that were criminal acts, but this is not a criminal act. Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, guess what, 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 make the argument that he committed a criminal act. Well, I mean, if he got information like that, like it was definitely negligent. I mean, if he wouldn't give access to the computers or he ignored Condoleezza's thing, like, that's pretty negligent. Um, I don't have the full story here. I don't think he was, uh, I don't think it, the uh, thing on the, the computer in Minnesota went that high, as high up as Bush. Um, it was just, I think at the time, it was not that easy to get, like, the warrant look at the computer. Yeah. Um, as far as the uh, the memo, I mean, they took their eyes off it, but, like, you never know when something's actually going to happen. There's... There are lots of like warnings and nothing actually happens. I don't know. I, I, I feel like invading Iraq afterwards for no apparent reason, for no good reason, that would seem like a criminal act, you can argue. Yeah. Uh, but this seems like a, at, at most he's negligent and like there are lots of attacks that happen that you like – they're not going to be perfect. I mean what if there was some warning ahead of Benghazi you know, and that happened? Should Obama be held legally – like uh, criminally responsible? I mean, if if people said, "Hey, this is going to happen," he's like, "Yeah, you know, I'm just going to go to my I'm going to smoke a joint, I'm going to go to my you. Texas ranch instead." I, I I don't think it was that. Like, I think uh, if he actually thought something an attack was going to happen, he probably would have done more. I just don't think he thought an attack was actually going to happen. Oh, this is my wife. Hey, hang on one second. Excuse, one second. Sure. All right. We so we just found out. Uh, Two big things of breaking information. Yes. Uh, why my wife called me, and that phone number that was in there was never her number. And I don't know who I'm, this Ray person that's been in my phone for a long time. Maybe Jay's been playing a joke on me. Um, also, we were supposed to have a, um, a third person on the show who's in the middle of a breakup with his girlfriend and refuses to do the breakup on the show because he's an asshole. So you could send your hate mail to thebrinkofsanity at gmail.com. 
listen, if you're going to be part of our community, you should have your most your you should have the hardest moments of your life on the air, like we don't do. That's what makes for good radio. <laughs> We should do that more. We should like have every like I like if I'm gonna fight with my wife, I'd be like, hang on, hang on, get a headset. We're gonna do this on the air. Well, you could just silently dial the the voicemail number and just leave it as a voicemail, and then we could just play it later and break it down. Yeah, that would actually be pretty good. And I find out like like after a while, like Jason, you just keep taking the taking her side, and you're like, Mark, you're just a bad husband. <laughs> we got another voicemail. Another? You're fucking kidding me. Nope. We got. Two voicemails, and you haven't given the number out in a while. Yeah, six three one six seven six one one eight one. I have to delete uh, this guy Will's, this guy Ray's number from my uh, phone now. <laughs> go, go, go. Hey, this is Frank again um, for the Brink of Sanity. All right, so I just hit hearing you guys talk about tantrums, and it reminded me of a strategy that I do with my kid when he's going to like convenience stores. And uh, I want I want Mark to try this and let me know if it works. Is so it my kid, um, kids, you know how you know take kids to convenience stores, and um, you know they Was want it? stuff. And if you you know how you take kids to convenience stores, you know how you do. What are you gonna do with the kids today? Take them to the convenience store. Go well, on, I mean, Jay. if you're alone with the kid and you gotta go to the convenience store, it's just the way you did the way you said that. You know how you you know how you take kids to convenience stores. Tell them no, you know, you pretty much disappoint them and they have a sucky experience in the store. So my strategy now is once you walk into the store, they're like, oh, I like this thing. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Pick what you want. So they pick what they want. They sit in the cart with it. They play with it, whatever. I'm shopping, um, girlfriend shopping, everything's all good. And then <laughs> usually, usually before we get to the register, they're bored of the tour. So it's the toys in the cart. They don't care. It's whatever. Sometimes the toy's still in their hand, but then I'll just say, oh, okay, you know, just hand me the toy. And then when they're not looking, give it to the cashier and say, we're not buying it. Then, all right, bye. Yeah, that's not bad advice. So let them play with it in the store. And right, and then just take the, like, go up and down every aisle till they're sick of it. I have noticed that like uh, when they really want me to buy something, a couple of times I've given it in. And they've never actually played with that item once we got home. It yes. just sits in our house like, like, oh, that yellow ball that they like, like screamed and had a tantrum over. They've never even looked at since we got home with it. I think uh, Frank's onto something. I usually, I'll, I'll tell my son, I'll, I'll tell him like, when he wants to, he's like, can I have this? I'll say, we have no money. Sorry, I can't afford it. <laughs> and my, my son, we can't afford a yellow Pez dispenser. Can't afford it. Don't have the money. <laughs> We don't. You don't have any money, Daddy. I want you go to a bank. Um, I would, but there's no banks around here, so sorry. Banks out of money too. Yeah, he tells me to go to the bank. He's like, why don't you go to the bank? And then I'll be buying something else. Wait, but Dad, you said you didn't have money. Oh, I only have money for this, the exact amount. I don't have any, any other money. Do you have a job? Why don't you get a job? <laughs> <laughs> but Daddy, I don't have a job. Sorry, you should have brought money yourself. <laughs> I've gone away with that a number of times, just telling him I don't have money, like. He's like wants like a gumball. I'm like, I don't have money for that. I wish I did. I only had exact amount of money to get your haircut, not the gumball. Sorry. You're gonna hate it when he starts getting a concept of money. Oh yeah, no, no. He's gonna. He's he, like he's like he's the other time when he started calling me on like he's like, but you had enough money for that gift for Morgan, his sister. Yeah. Um. Fine. She gets nothing. Also, we're leaving. <laughs> Uh, we got some emails. Uh, fantastic. I have nothing to talk about. So you, you know what I find funny? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have nothing to talk about. But uh, so Chris Christie dropped out of the race. Mm-hmm. Um, the presidential. They had they just had the New Hampshire primaries. This is what we're recording the day after. Um, and every time they say Chris Christie is no longer running or he's out of the race, I look at how goddamn fat he is. And I can't think. Like it just looks. The concept of race and running is like they're playing like like they like, like if they're giggling as they're saying. Chris Christie will no longer be running, and he's out of the presidential race contest. <laughs> Chris Christie has never run. He's never run. <laughs> he looks so they, – they had a debate last week, and he was debating. He was uh, – Mark Rubio, him going back and forth. And then they show, they show Chris Christie like a side, like a side shot of him, um, and he looked like – like he looked seven t- 17 times like as big as the podium. Oh, he's got a front butt. 
He is such a big, oh my God. Do you think it's a fair question to ask? If you have no, you have no ability to control yourself around food, <laughs> how would you be able to run our country? That is true. If you see a meatball sub and you make love to it, can we really have you like in control of our nuclear weapons? <laughs> I think that's a valid question. I think people would like that. I think we should run the debates and ask all questions like that. Would it be the same thing as like asking like Carly Fiorina, "Ooh, um, what about? Are you going to bomb? Are you going to drop nuclear warheads every thirtieth day of the month because of your time of your month?" <laughs> well, if she's still having a period at sixty-one. I'd be impressed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she, uh, she dropped out also. The uh, Christina Fiorina, the uh, two. I, I read something that like they're they're having all these things for delegates right now. But there's twice as many delegates, but the other ones don't have to vote the way the popular vote goes. Oh, my God. So I was reading, apparently, so Bernie Sanders won, won New Hampshire by, like, 60. He had, like, 65. He, like, trounced Clinton. He destroyed won, her, like, yeah. Destroyed her. She may end up having more delegates in New Hampshire than he does. Because the system's rigged. So they have regular delegates, and they have what they call super delegates. They're kind of like superheroes, but the Marvel's not going to make a movie about them. Uh, or maybe they should. Who knows? Uh, but the regular delegates, they go where the voters go. So if the voters vote for Bernie, he gets the regular delegates. And I think they might be apportioned like, percentage-wise, but he gets a lot of – let's get a lot of delegates that way. Then there are these super delegates who are just like rich assholes who are just like in with the Democratic Party – who have been called your super delegate, and you could vote however you damn well please. So it's like the state, the uh, state of New Hampshire, the uh, I don't know what. A, how many people think live in New Hampshire? Hundred thousand people? Two hundred thousand? Can't be that many. Where's the stack guy on this? It's mostly trees. Yeah, yeah. So the, like all the people in New Hampshire, they vote. They get eight delegates, and then there are eight other people whose votes count the exact same thing as the entire state in choosing the Democratic Party. That's great. Democratic nomination. Yeah, that's why I get mad when people say we have a democracy. We really don't. I would. That's the next debate question. They should ask, hey, Hillary, you got trounced in New Hampshire, um, and I see you have the same amount of delegate votes as Bernie coming out of New Hampshire. Can you define democracy for me, please? <laughs> what a fucking... So basically, Bernie has to win about 70% of the votes in every single state to even have a, a prayer. I don't know what state does superdelegates and what doesn't, but apparently... They, they pledge their votes, and apparently Hillary's already won hundreds of uh, superdelegate votes. Or yeah, they she has like 300 and something votes. Without having fucking votes in these states. Right. She gets these superdelegates, and Bernie's like, well, I have to rely on the people. She gets to rely on the, uh, the rich people that we've been giving favors to in the Democratic Party. The whole thing is so unbelievably rigged. So basically less than 400 people decide the entire election. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know why Bernie's not like – he's chanting about inequality. He's just chanting about the whole election thing is being rigged. Well, I think if he wins – say he wins like you know, three-quarters of the states and then he doesn't get the nod, I think he'll flip out. I would. <laughs> I don't think he's going to win three-quarters of the state. But like that's it's, – it's like, oh, you know, everyone in America voted for you, Bernie, except for the, the eight people that get to decide who's president. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, I was reading – like it's – between reading like the, how the caucuses work where they're like – in Iowa, where they're like – all those in favor of Donald Trump stand here. All those in favor of Mark Rubio stand here. Now, Rubio people, you can try to convince Donald Trump people and go back and forth. Who can convince who to move over to their place? <laughs> That's literally, I think, how they actually work in the. Uh... Yeah. Okay, let's go back to emails. Are we like? I know when they always say like we want to like they like we're bringing democracy into another country. Do you think any country really wants our version of democracy? No, I think they actually bring real democracy to other countries, which is weird. They're like, guys, you ha I hate the way you run your government. You have to do it this way. We don't do it this way, but you have to. You know, okay, so the people of Afghanistan, you will vote for your president. Um, your votes will count for, for – uh, your votes will count for, for some percentage of it. And then these two guys who have a lot of money and gave a lot of money to our cause, they'll get to actually decide. They'll vote on who's your president. <laughs> so basically this is all just a waste of time. It completely wastes time. I don't know why we, like, you even, why we invaded. Oh, well. I heard it the same way with Trump. Like, Cruz, uh, not Cruz, uh, Rubio has all the, the superdelegates. So Trump's going to have to win 60% of uh, every state. Do they say, for, they say for Trump also, like, the, like the, the Republican, whatever the people that control the party will never let it happen. So they get to, like, the uh, nomination, they'll just choose whoever they want anyway. Right. This, so we're going to end up with, like, 
Rubio versus Clinton anyway, even if Sanders and Trump like stomp their way. Well, I think then they're going to have everyone like Trump is probably going to run into independent. I think Bloomberg said he might get into it. This is playing out to be the greatest reality show ever. It would be funny if Sanders and Trump just say, you know what? Screw you guys. We're both independent party now. It'd be funny if this didn't affect our nation. <laughs> yeah. <that's true. laughs> okay. What was, you, was there another voicemail? Someone sent us like a email. We got emails. Oh, email. I actually missed this email the last like two episodes. So sorry, Stu. What are your thoughts? You are two last two episodes? I think so. Wow, you were a giant asshole. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that brutally awful duck lips expression that most women are adopting when taking a photo these days? Are there literally words that exist on this planet to actually describe how unappealing and generally dumb this comes across to normal people? I what, think, you know. Is there like a, like a uh, what is it called? Like an, an agent zero for this duck lips thing? Like who was the first person to actually do this, and then, and then everyone said, "Oh, that looks good." I'm gonna look this up because I don't know one person who who <laughs> who thinks it looks good. Yet it's everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna go to. Uh, <laughs> so I looked up duck lips, and the first is the Urban Dictionary has a definition. Of it. I'm gonna look that in a second, but then it says, "How do I talk to my daughter about duck lips?" <laughs> Which sounds like the funniest article ever. Why is that? Oh my god! Yeah, I I don't. It, why are people doing this? I don't know. There's a girl that I went to high school with that takes a selfie with duck lips from her car on the way to work every single day. I'm like, you're almost forty, and this is what you're doing on your way to work every day. I mean, I have to say, most people that take selfies and put them on Facebook, they should look at what they're doing with their lives. She also looks like tan mom. So imagine a duck lip tan mom. Taking selfies every day. I, I actually, I, anytime I see someone taking a selfie, like, and you know they're posting it to like Facebook or Instagram, I like, I, I hate them. Yeah, I have a strong hate for most people that do this. Like, do you really need to put a take a selfie at the gym to show people that you're at the gym? How about you just exist in your own life and don't your your own reality, and don't share like the dumbest parts of your of your life with other people? Yeah, you know what I think one of my least favorite ones is the ones where people go running and they post the map of like where they ran. That's such a humble brag. It's also like no one's ever given a shit about this, right? No one's ever given a shit that you ran. Oh wow, you ran eight miles today, and here's where you ran. And if people post the strangest fucking shit to Facebook. I don't know. I, I mental disorders, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I can't be. Uh, not being necessarily funny about it, but uh, it's just it's a weird set of like uh, things that people post. Um, let me see my, my Facebook profile. My Facebook. What would you send me? I sent you the profile of uh, Duck Lips. So you, ah. can, you can see Tan Mom Duck Lips. Oh, I kind of, I kind of do want to see that. It's a, uh, it's hard to believe unless you see it, like. That this is an actual like adult who thinks this it's necessary to do this. She does this a lot, apparently. Every, I'm telling you, every single day. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit! Anyway. Man, I do this every day. Yes, we hate it. We don't know who Agent Zero is, but we should find that person and do away with them. How insane do you have to be of yourself just to do like this woman does? Duck lift just, after duck lift and lip. Holy fucking a! She went to school with you. Yeah. She was it's like, like you, it's like literally like just selfie after selfie after selfie with her doing the damn lips. But even it's just like some of them don't have the lip, but it's like it's like self. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Oh, the uh, that rapper you asked about in the beginning of the show, he did the Super Mario Brothers rap. Oh. Okay, Lorenzo writes, what does Mark think about Little Dicky the Rapper? If you haven't heard, he's a white Jewish comedian who tried <laughs> rapping and turns out he's really good and has respect from all the young hip-hop guys. His YouTube clips are amazing also. I would first listen to Ex-Boyfriend and then save that money and then the 90s. Play one. Jay, you will probably like the 90s one also. It's called Little Dicky? L- Lil, L-I-L. You got to play him. Do I? Yeah. Well, what the fuck else are we talking doing right now? 
We got we got lots of stuff lined up. I don't know. If we oh, just play the goddamn song. Don't make us talk about it anymore. <laughs> well, it's not like I instantly have a little dicky queued up. I got to go find it. So I'm trying. Should to you have this stuff queued up? Should we be a professional show? We should. We should be a professional show. I didn't think I'd need little dicky videos to queued up for the show. I bet he's pretty good. We'll find out now, won't we? I guess. What song is it? You say go uh, for the nineties. No, which is the one he said was the best one. The one that he said that's the one I'll probably like. Okay, well let's let's find out. I'm gonna I'm probably guessing I'm not gonna like it. So this one first. This is the nineties. That, hmm? that that was not the one he said to listen to. Which one did he say first? You have the email. Let's look at the email. Why don't you? Obviously, you have the email too. Why don't you just tell me? I'm not gonna. I, I don't have the email. Just you tell me, Jay. <laughs> really? You remembered it? You okay. just said it. Fine. It's a okay. different song. You're right. You got <laughs> me. You got me. I I don't know why I was paying attention while you were talking, but uh. He's wearing a Sixers jersey. Uh, he's tanking. <laughs> Okay, this is the one he said to play first. Is this going to be like a... Every... Word sloping penis. I got a story for you, man. Every rap video has like a, a fucking play and a story in the beginning. Why can't they just get into the song? There's always like a plot. It's like a, it's like a mini movie. I'm just going to skip ahead. I don't want to hear your stupid plot for your song. Well, it's better than Drake. Yeah, I like it better than Drake. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, I will make a note to myself to download a little Dicky. This is the other one. Third grade back in 96 with my Michael Jordan jersey. French fries curly. Cool with it. Raisin Tamagotchi's dig three and a. Well, in this one, he's in a jazz jersey, so he clearly has no team affiliation. Yeah, he's just wearing. He's fronting with basketball jerseys. Motherfucker, this might be a trend. He just wears colors he likes. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's a, that's a little suspect. Okay. Uh, do we have any more? That is it for emails. So a lot of emails there. We could go to Facebook questions. Sweet. What are, what's going on with you, Jay? What's new with you? I am going skiing for the first time in my life next week. You've never been skiing before? I've never been skiing ever. Wow. Not that it's wow. I mean, like, it does sound like there's a bit of a dick sound, like a douchebagness from going, you've never been skiing? <laughs> wow. But we do live in the Northwest. That's a pretty common thing to do. So in two weeks, we could talk about how the rehab of my broken ankles is going. <laughs> Where are you going skiing? Hunter Mountain. Ah, oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Um, are you good on a, do you know, like skate? Like, I don't even know how related it really is, but you, like, you, can you skate? Like ice skate? Or roller skate? I don't skate? know. Any form of skating where you're on wheels. In junior or high, I went to the roller rink and I skated to Technotronic. Remember them? So, so, so is a yes or a no? <laughs> I can go straight, and I can go fast straight, but I can't turn or stop. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll give you a tip. The, uh, they're gonna t- are you going to take a lesson first, or are you just going to go right, right for it? I Yeah, this is like an $80 package where you get like a, a lesson, ski lifts, and rentals. Yeah, take the lesson. Take the lesson. It's, like, it's a little like a, the first time you do it, it's a little tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, until you actually figure out how to stop, it's kind of hard. I watched a YouTube tutorial, so I um, think I'm ready for the Black Diamond. Okay, cool. So they're going to tell you pizza, french fries. It's bullshit. That won't make you stop. You got to, like, just turn your skis. Yeah, the tutorial said, like, yeah, make a uh, a V shape. or. Yeah, they say pizza, french fries, like V or whatever, and that's how you stop. But you'll basically all you'll do when you do that is, is go really fast and not figure out how to stop yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to stop yourself when you're moving with speed, you got to just like turn to the side, kind of like you turn with like ice skates. Mm. Um, I never really go fast enough on ice skates, but I, yeah, you're just, just like just really force yourself and like dig your uh, skis in there. Um, which which leg are you gonna try break? Um, I think I'm gonna go with the left one this time. Did I ever tell you when I was, did I ever 
mentioned I'd done the show when I was skiing, and I almost killed the mother when she was there with her kids. Mm-mm. I uh, was first learning how to ski, and I wasn't very good. All I could do was go really fast down the mountain, which the, the easiest thing to do on skis is go really fast straight. Um, and I was getting a little confidence because I was like, I was going down. I, like, I, could, I could move around a little bit, but and, like somehow I would stop at the end. Um, but I wasn't very good at this point. And I was going, and somehow, like, I'm on, like, the green, the green slope was, like, the easier slopes where you still get pretty fast. And I'm going, and I'm going too fast for the slope. And, like, this family is having a picnic there. I don't know. They, they can't, they're all, like, sitting there in the middle of the mountain. And some, like, girl popped out of nowhere. I dived to avoid the girl and took the mom's legs out. She was, like, st- like just, like, not facing me. Literally just swept her legs out. She fell on her back and her head. The whole family was like just staring at me like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And they were like, what are you doing here? Why? How did you do it? Like, I'm like, I'm just learning. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. You're having a fucking picnic in the middle of the mountain. <laughs> Anyhow, she, I, she, she, was, she wasn't badly injured. Well, I, felt re- I felt really terrible. Yeah, I probably would too. It was a little girl crying. Uh, the, kid, like, the, little, the kids were crying. It was, it was a really uh, great, great moment for me. Yeah, you want to, so basically you want to learn how to stop before you go really fast. Yeah. Skiing. But it's fun. All right. So once, you, once, you, once you get the hang of it. Let's go to Facebook questions. Sure. All right. Bri writes, can you recap the top fives from the last two or three shows, please? Perfect. <laughs> Scott writes, do you guys still hope that this podcast will bring you fame and fortune? I don't think we've ever hoped that, Joe. <laughs> I think I have a better chance of the lottery ticket I bought can bring me fame and fortune than the actual show. Yeah, I mean, that would be nice, but... Um... Is it stupid that I still play the lottery? I mean, I, I know it is, but, like, do you, do you ever play the lottery? Yeah, I play it every week. Okay. We, we had, I hadn't been doing it for a while. We had, like, a pool with work going, and I stopped doing it for a while. Like, we all just stopped doing it. And then, like, like two weeks ago, we were like, why don't we do that pool again? I'm like, I know we're wasting money, but I still want a dream. It... I don't know. I get like a glimmer of hope twice a week. Like I know there's almost no shot, but at least there's a tiny, tiny little shot. At least I can have the conversation in my head of, well, just say I won. How is my life going to be different? Right. If I won, listen, like I'm always not like I don't need to win the billion dollar prize. I could win ten million dollars and be pretty happy. Even if I won like the third place twenty thousand dollar prize, like just enough to like wipe out my debt. Well, no, that would be a, that would be a shitty lottery. Because you'd wipe out your debt, but everyone would be like, oh, Jay, you won the lottery. Like, drinks are on you. No, no, no. I won a lot. I didn't win that much money. Oh, Mr. Big Spender, you won the lot. I only won $20,000. Oh, 20000 More like $20 million. No, I really don't have – people would just, like, harass you the rest of your life. I probably just wouldn't tell them. Uh, you got to win, like, the $20 million one. No, I mean 20000 is, like, third place. Oh, is that third place? Yeah. Oh, I, I would be disappointed. I would always be like – like. I feel like I'd be screwed. I got gypped on my lottery win because you're not going to win twice. Yeah, that, that's, you'd probably just stop playing after that. Yeah, I don't mind. Like I'm figuring out like I have to split with some people at work where I'm like, hey, if I, if I walk away with like $5 million, I could probably live, live the rest of my life and not have to work again. Yeah, I would think so. How much, how much, what's the minimum you think you'd win with a never work again? Probably five. Yeah, I'd say five. I mean, if you won like a million dollars, you could probably get away with it. Maybe like, but you wouldn't necessarily live in New York. Right, but it would go quick. I mean, between like a house and a car, like you're you're already halfway done. So I'm I'm working five million dollars. I'm like, how? What am I gonna do? Like, oh, I win five million dollars tonight in the lottery. What's my day like gonna be tomorrow? What should I do? What am I gonna do with my time? Right. Then you could just wake up and be like, let's 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 take it to the scenario, Jay. You won five million dollars after taxes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how your life changes. I'm definitely gonna go to Tomorrowland. Which is uh, this awesome, like, big electronic music festival over in Europe? Um, probably, I would definitely do a lot of traveling. I thought Tomorrowland was something to do with, something to do with Disney. No, that's Neverland. Oh, wasn't there a Tomorrowland movie? Uh, with a uh, um, Forrest Gump in it. That's Forrest Gump. Well, not Tom Hanks. I I, I assume you 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 get the, the leap in character. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what is that movie? It had that character Forrest Gump in it. What was that called? No, there was a movie called Tomorrowland. There was there was it also was... a movie with uh, this guy Peter Pan in it. What was the name of that movie? <laughs> 
So there's this character, um, the X Men. What movie were they in? <laughs> uh, I couldn't for whatever reason Tom Hanks did not the name didn't come come out to me. So I figured I'd say I would say Forrest Gump, and you would assume I meant Tom Hanks, not <laughs> I meant Forrest Gump. <laughs> what if Forrest Gump was just in a lot of movies? Like I mean, his whole thing was he he just come into like seeing random events in history and just be like be there. Like what if it's just like. Forrest Gump just shows up in like the uh, the new X Men movie. They should do that. It should be like the Wilhelm scream, where it just it, it's there if you look closely. It's yeah. just like a, the, every movie, Tom Hanks has a con- cameo as Forrest Gump in every movie going forward. Yeah, but it's subtle. In Twelve it's like, Years a Slave. Forrest Gump's like, oh, must be must. Oh, my mommy always said uh, a box of chocolates is like being a slave. No, Bye. he doesn't even have to talk. <laughs> He'll just be in the background, like helping them pick cotton or something. But it's so much better if he talks. It's just like his kind of like mild retardedism. Yeah. He just walks in. He's like, have you seen Jenny? <laughs> have you seen Jenny? Giant dinosaurs on this dinosaur island? Okay, bye. <laughs> it would be great if he was in the Steve Jobs movie. Because then he'd be like, he'd be like, he'd like the, my boat captain bought some apples. Do you own apples? Oh, you created apple. That doesn't make sense. Do you know Jenny? <laughs> every time he's about to leave, he asks where Jenny is in every movie. It's it, them and the uh, the guy from Something About Mary just asking about my, where's my baseball. It's like every movie has one or the other guy. <laughs> we should own Hollywood. So We'd better. make such better movies. I know. <laughs> I They're coming out with Zoolander 2. It comes out this weekend. Mm-hmm. Can that possibly be good? No. There's a 0% chance. Of, but you know what? It's going to make millions anyway. I who says like oh part I remember that movie I saw twenty years ago part two's coming out I'm excited apparently a bunch of people people are I, like talking about it Zoolander gets a thirty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes which seems a lot higher than I expected that seems unreasonably high yeah Deadpool gets eighty one percent that's great that it has such good ratings for a movie that didn't come out yet Deadpool well I'm saying this is for this weekend's reviews. Oh, Deadpool these are movies. actual like people who've seen the movie. Have you have you not heard Rotten Tomatoes? I didn't know they. Uh, I forgot about advanced screening reviews. It's coming out this yeah, like they, it's coming out this week, and they have a they this the, the consensus on it from reviewers. Well, no, because you go to other sites and people review stuff that isn't even out yet. Oh uh, well, like like you go on Netflix and it'll be like Deadpool and it'll be like a hundred reviews, and the reviews will be like five stars, can't wait. Or one like, star. Who the fuck's yeah, Deadpool? Yeah, one star. I don't like Deadpool. Like, you know, I don't know. I hate those reviews. Um, here's the reviews we got from Richard Roper, big critic. If only Deadpool was as clever, dark, and funny as it believes itself to be. That's a helpful review. Mm-hmm. Michael Phillips writes from the Chicago Tribune. Reynolds is entertaining. It's a rather sweet to see this internally not quite a star get closer than usual to justifying star billing. These are all vague reviews. <laughs> There's long reviews. They just take like a, a quote from it. Okay. This is their favorite quotes. Deadpool is funny, frequently hilarious. Deadpool is essentially the world's first superhero fan movie. Awesome. All Deadpool right. knows where Jenny is, writes Forrest Gump. <laughs> Scott writes, Also, just wanted to let Mark know that my one-year-old always laughs when he talks. He's either an asshole mocking you or finds you funny, Either way, thanks for making my drives to daycare before work easier. So apparently you have a funny voice. Wait, the, 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 they fi- he finds my voice? Only when you talk, his one-year-old starts laughing. That's awesome. I wonder if it's during your Derrick Rose impressions or it's just... I, I have a funny voice. I, I can admit it. <laughs> what if like my voice was just like... like I can, People would just crack up my voice was so weird. I can just, my stand-up routine is just me being going like... Why are you people laughing? Um, I, I ate some pizza today, and people just crack up because my voice is so weird. That's the way I feel during Always Sunny when Charlie talks. I don't know. That guy's voice just cracks me up. He is kind of funny. Is it? Is the new season good? It's okay. Like, I haven't watched that show in a couple of years. Now. Season 10 was amazing. You're full uh, of shit. No. Not. Really? Yeah, it was, it was probably like my third favorite season out of the whole thing. Wow. Okay. Was it, was it a top 10 season? Did I dunch? <laughs> Scott writes, worst celebrity baby name. 
Um, what did Kanye name his kids? I just looked that up. Uh, Northwest, Northwest, right? And Saint. Yeah, yeah that, that wins. That beats Apple. Apple had been the worst one of all. But. What about Dweezil? Who's Dweezil? Frank Zappa's kid. That's pretty fucking bad. How about Soleil Moonfry? Holy shit, what the fuck's wrong with people? <laughs> you gotta love the 70s. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm trying. Who whose kid was that? Soleil Moon. One's kid wasn't a kid like recently blue. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, whatever. Soleil Moon Fry was. Uh, would it be what would it be better name for Kanye's kid? North, um, being his name Northwest, or like Bernie? Would it be great if his name is kid Bernie? Like the most like the most old Jewish guy name possible. <laughs> This is Moishe West. Soleil Moonfry is uh, was Punky Brewster. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Punky, remember Punky Brewster? The name was Soleil Moonfry. Yeah. What? <laughs> is she hot now? Yeah, totally. Really? Yeah, like really hot. No way. Yeah. I'm looking. Wait, is that her? I don't know. It's an audio podcast. I know, but uh, <laughs> how many times am I gonna have to say that? I know, but I looked up her. I looked up Punky Brewster, Brewster, and uh, then and now. So this is a uh, then, mm-hmm. and the uh, now picture is that can't be her. <laughs> it is. I'm telling you. Um, what? Yeah. God damn it! I want those stupid click through things now. I hate the internet so much. <laughs> At least the video didn't start playing. Wow. What is she doing with herself? Because she looks hot in the... She was an actor and a director. Oh. Anything? Was she in any porns I know? No. Oh. Yeah. All right. Moving along. Punked in my Brewster? We're slow. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess Saint West, because it's just obnoxious. I think Northwest is worse, but yeah. Okay. Well, it's one of the, something the Kardashians did. The Dashians. And yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> if you could change a historical figure's name, who? What and do you, what, what, what's worse for our country, the the Kardashians or Trump becoming president? Hmm. Reputation wise, or actual like state of affairs wise. I guess reputation-wise. I don't know if Kardashians are much better than Trump becoming president. I think they might be worse because that's like the biggest celebrity from this country is a girl who gave a blowjob. Yeah. I mean, what does that say about us, that we worship her? You know, like out of 320 million people, she's the most famous one, and all she did was give a blowjob. I wish when they introduced her, that's how they like introduced her. Yeah, and on your uh, and and giving out the award tonight, we have Madonna, who had a long, long musical career, and Kim Kardashian, who uh, who gave a blowjob and her ass appeared in a porn. <laughs> you may recognize her from Ray J blowjob video and literally nothing else. Paris Hilton, her daddy's rich, and she gives does porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they shouldn't they just like announce her as porn star Paris Hilton? <laughs> yeah. Like people, like people. Anytime she does anything else, they say, "Like, are you gonna have a sequel to the uh, the porn you did early in your career?" <laughs> I mean, we'd like to see one in not night vision. <laughs> Will you be giving out any more blowjobs on camera? That's the crazy. Both of those videos were terrible porns, too. Yeah, I mean, we don't even worship girls who make good porns. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good porn out there. Why don't these women become major celebrities? I don't get it. I mean, there's really hot women on Chatterbait. Why don't they become stars? Yeah. That's what I... Why isn't Bernie Sanders talking about these kind of things? <laughs> these are the real issues we need to address. Because let's face it, we're not going to... Uh, we're not going to solve the wealth divide. So we might as well make uh, deserving porn stars famous. Like like now is the next debate or next speeches. You just start talking about, I realize Medicare for all with the Republican Congress is not possible. But I want to say what we can do 
is bring equality to Chatterbait. <laughs> the shrinking middle class, is, it's a done deal, can't be reversed. So what we're going to do is we're going to find some some really good porn stars and, and make them famous. And we're going to do away with all this night vision and fucking selfie porn video shit. <laughs> Bernie we... <laughs> Um Now this, oh. <laughs> this is a porno, folks. <laughs> My 73-year-old cock is hard to this. Thank you, porn stars. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. <laughs> if you could change a historical figure's name, who and what would you choose? i change Adolf Hitler to I love Jews. Um, not bad. I, I think I think his first name would be Master and his last name would be Bader. And then, then the German people would never have followed a guy named Master Bader. That's true. We Just give him some kind of ridiculous name, like, sh- sh- uh, like Schlongi Caker Eater. What about um, what about changing like Osama bin Laden's name to I Masterminded 9-11, Here I Am. <laughs> Um, how about, uh, we change, uh, George Bush's name to Amanda Hug and Kiss. I would change Mark David Chapman's name to I Murder John Lennon. <laughs> I would name, uh, uh, Oswald's name to, uh, Lone Gunman. <laughs> I'd change, I'd change his name to Look Behind the Grassy Knoll. Uh, um... I would change the name of the guy who invented the internet to free porn. That would be his name. What if we just changed Kim Kardashian's name to famous for blowjobs? Um, that way, that way you'd have to say it every time she's announced. Yeah, there you go. Some good <laughs> and introducing name famous for blowjobs. <laughs> um, yeah, we can. I'm sure all these names will be approved very, very soon, and the world will be a better place. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Scott writes: Do you guys consider Die Hard a Christmas film? Um, Die Hard too. Well, I guess they're all on Christmas, right? They're on Christmas. I mean, they're not about Christmas though. That's what makes it a Christmas film. I know. You, pe- would you hands down say Die Hard One is the best action movie of all time? No, absolutely not. Really? What do you say is better? It's it's kind of dated now. He's like crawling uh, through the air vents. And he's like, what am I, a microwave dinner? It's like cheesy. What's better? The Rock. See, I, I'll put The Rock on equal ground. Really? I think it's the only... I, I love The Rock. I think they're equally the two... I think the two greatest action movies of all time. I think the um, Die Hard set the entire... Uh, like, that really... That was the first, like, me versus, like, one guy versus all the terrorist movies. Mm-hmm. That was the first like modern um, action movie, except for Rambo. It was much better than Rambo. Rambo, Rambo kind of sucks. Uh, awesome. It was. Did it kind of like change? Like there was a whole genre of like action movies where it was like one guy versus like a group of like terrorists. Every James Bond movie. Every James Bond. <laughs> Fine. It still was. I, I think I think that it's equal to uh to the Rock. The Rock obviously is a little. The Rock is actually dated now. Also, Rock was like almost twenty years ago. Yeah, but he's not joking about being a microwave dinner. Oh, but it's so good though. The, the Rock's original- amazing. I I, I, can't, I can't argue at all. But the Rock is dumb. Like the the part of the Rock is the dumbest part when he explains to him what your last name Godspeed means. You know your last name Godspeed. It means good speed or whatever the fuck it means. You don't remember that part? No, no, I don't remember that. Oh, Nicholas Cage's last name is like Godspeed or something like that. And he had, like, at one point, uh, Sean Connery explains him what it means towards the end of the movie. Hmm. Um, I don't think I'd put Die Hard in my top 20. You would not? What the hell's wrong with you? Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I easily think it makes any list um, of top, like, what else is better than that? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, I guess that's kind of an action. Die Hard's better. I think Die Hard, Die Hard, and uh, The Rock are the two greatest action movies of all time, hands down. 
absolutely hands down. And this is for debating opinion. My opinion is better than yours. The Terminator. I think Terminator Two is better than Terminator One. Right, but I think they're both better than Die Hard. Disagree, but Terminator Two is great also. Predator. I was going to make a top five list. Terminator Two is on the list also. Predator. Uh, eh. Predator's good, not great. Face Off. Really? <laughs> Con Air is better than Face Off, by the way. Mad Max. Actually, Fa- Face Off is pretty good, but uh, The Fugitive. Fugitive is amazing. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with this. Fugitive is amazing. Fugitive. Why don't they make action movies like that anymore? Braveheart. Yeah, I guess it wasn't. Cl- the fine. Fuck this category. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Say this a lot. Fine. Fine. Die Hard is the best action movie involving Bruce Willis against terrorists set in the 80s. Die Hard 2. <laughs> Just it's, it's definitely better than Die Hard 2. Yeah. <laughs> That's a series that did not get better as it went. Die Hard 3 actually I thought was really good. With Samuel Jackson? Die Hardest? Whatever the hell. No, after Die Hard 3, it got really bad. But Die Hard 3 was actually weird. Like, Die Hard 3 is better than Die Hard 2. Do you not remember the movie? Yeah. I, okay, Stats Guy. The Terminator is an American science fiction action film. Thank you. <laughs> and Braveheart is not the same. It's not the same kind of genre of action movie as Die Hard. You're just you're, you're conflating all these movies. These categories, they're not. I need really niche categories to go with. <laughs> What's okay. the greatest sports movie of all time? Greatest sports movie of all time. White Man Can't Jump. That'd be the best. Let's go by category. By sport. Basketball. White Man Can't Jump. Hands down best basketball movie of all time. Teen Wolf. <laughs> That's not really a basketball movie. I would go White Man Can't Jump. Okay. We agree. Um, I do like Glory Road. Uh a lot also, but uh, it's not, not nearly as good. Um, football. Uh, was it The Longest Yard? The 70s one, not the one where they replaced all the good actors with Indians. <laughs> I did not see that one, but the program. Any Given Sunday was good, too. Any Given Sunday was overrated. Rudy. Rudy's the best one. Might be. Yeah. Baseball. Baseball... It's got to be Major League. Yeah, yeah. Um, though, actually, if you're going to pretend it's a baseball movie, Nicky Gunn is pretty close, too. It had a pretty long baseball scene. It did. Uh, boxing. Rocky IV. Are you going to be serious or not? You don't like Rocky IV? Don't I you? like Rocky IV. It's not the best that movie. Is by make, far, Rocky One is one of the greatest movies of all time. Rocky IV is by far better. Have you seen the new Rocky? Apollo? Yeah. Can they just call it Rocky 7? Fucking assholes. <laughs> I, I hate every movie series now. I have to, like, pull up, like, maps and charts and, like, Wikipedias and, like, just fucking Rocky. It's like Rocky, the one through five, they got it. And then the sixth one is just called Rocky. Fuck you. And now yeah, the seventh one's Apollo. Does- they don't like the thing is also they wasn't it the uh, the Academy Awards are racist because because the Rocky wasn't nominated for Best Picture, and you're like oh well maybe because it's Rocky Part Seven people don't want to say it's Best Picture. You're pretending it's not Rocky Part Seven, but it is Rocky Part Seven. Yeah, fuck yourself. It's Rocky Seven. I hate all this shit. I do want to see it. I cannot imagine how it could be that great when it's the same movie that's been released six times already. Isn't the new Born Identity just called Born? Yeah. Fuck yourself again. It's Born Identity just, 5. You have to put the number in it from now on. Just oh, Fast so the scary. Furious does it. They're not, the, the, new, the new Fast and the Furious is not going to be called Fast. I hate it. I hate, I, I hate this whole thing. Just number your sequels. You're not fooling anybody. Nobody gives a shit. I do want to see Apollo, but I, I'm sure it can't be as good as everyone's saying also. I'm like, it's, it's the same fucking movie. They've released it over and over again. How different can it be? I'm sure it's going to be. It's going to be just like Rocky V without his little shit son. It's going to be him, like, training Tommy Morrison. Yeah, they basically probably reshot that one with a better, with a better script. Wouldn't it be funny if they just, like, put, like, black coloring over Tommy Morrison's body and just re-release the movie? 
I mean, how different is it going to be? Like he's he's old and retired, and he trains like a new up and comer. But the new up and comer is Apollo's son. Oh, that is, that's a twist. That is a fucking twist. I, I assume that's the twist right there. Um, but yes, that's guy. We know it's Creed, but it's Rocky Seven. Come on, who trains him? It's fucking Rocky. Um, you can't have a guy who has six fucking movies star in the next movie and not have it be his movie. <laughs> Would it be also? Yeah, like you can't like hand it off midway. That's just like having an, an action movie about this guy named Fred, but he's running around with Indiana Jones the whole time, and you just call the movie <laughs> Fred. Like, it's Indiana Jones. You know, it, it, would, it would be great if also an Apollo. Um, one of his sparring par- partners is uh, Forrest Gump. Why are you hitting me? Where's Jenny? Ow, ow! <laughs> run, Forrest, run. <laughs> run, Forrest, run. <laughs> the part where Apollo Creed beats uh, Forrest Gump half to death, we didn't thought that was a little bit, uh, that was a little much. <laughs> Jenny, why are you hitting me? Jenny, why are you hitting me? He just calls everyone Jenny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jenny. My, my, my mommy said life is like a box of chocolates because the chocolates punch you in the face over and over again. <laughs> Jenny. I didn't hear no bell, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your first comes much better than my lack of trying. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Somebody asked if we could do impressions. That's my one impression. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> we could put a... <laughs> could we put a uh, Forrest Gump in a... That, uh, what's that loose change crap, that 9-11 conspiracy movie? Mm-hmm. Jenny, did you cause 9-11? <laughs> Throw the towel, Jenny. Gilliam writes, uh, this is from Louis C.K.'s new... Oh, oh, the, uh, what should we call it? Uh, Cinderella Man. That's actually a great boxing movie also. Do we did do all seen- the sports? I didn't see Cinderella Man. Oh, you have to see it. It's actually really, really good. It's, uh, what's his name? Uh, glad- who's the gladiator guy? Russell Crowe. Yes, Russell Crowe is amazing in it. By the way, Rocky Four is the best Rocky. It's got the best soundtrack. It's got the best fight scenes. It's got Russia. It's got Ivan Drago. Drago, I will crush you. I mean, it's got Drago, Apollo, and Rocky. It's the best one. It's got a robot butler. And Drago butler. kills Apollo. It's got a robot butler. Spoiler alert. Robot Butler. 1986 spoiler alert. I don't know if I remember that part. Yeah, Uncle Paulie gets a robot butler for... That's the, that's like the the one where he's super rich. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that every sport? Um, lacrosse. <laughs> I don't know. Tennis? <laughs> I don't know if there's any other... Oh, golf. Golf. Happy Gilmore. I'd argue, but that's the only golf movie. Tin Cup. That's actually really good. And Caddyshack, obviously. Mm. Um, any other sports? Hockey. Um, are there good? I know Slap Shots must be good, but I, never, I only saw part of it. I don't think I've ever seen a hockey movie. I know there's all the Mighty Duck ones and Slap Shot. I don't know if I've seen any of those. Yeah. I'm going to go with Friday the 13th. Chess. <laughs> yes, that's a pretty good one for hockey. <laughs> the best chess movie? Search Searching for Bobby Fischer? Yes. Yeah. The only chess movie? The <laughs> Forrest Gump ping pong movie. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so Gilliam writes, this is from Louis C.K.'s new show, Horace and Pete. Thoughts? And he sent a clip. A I, clip. I watched this clip already. Okay, did you? Yeah, uh, it's a long clip. Um, oh, yeah, I I can't, we can't play a five-minute clip. Yeah, it's a five-minute clip. It's just people talking about politics and like trying to understand each other better. And uh, a bunch of... Rants. I'm sure he, I really wanted to watch this Horace and Grant show until I found out a horse, whatever it's called, a new Louis C.K. show until I found out you had to pay for it. And then I said, fuck, I'm not paying for anything on the Internet. This is getting out of control. I mean, everyone's making their own stuff now. It's like cable's too expensive, so we're going to make our own stuff. But now everyone's doing it. So if you want everything now, it's like twice as expensive as cable. Yeah, everyone's like, I want everything a la carte. I, don't, I want if I want ESPN, I want just pay for ESPN. Yeah, now I have to pay $5 to see one show from Louis C.K. Right. Per episode, it's like five bucks. That, that's a wonderful system. Yeah. Right? Glad we don't have cable anymore. <laughs> Every $5 per show per week, wonderful. Yeah, I just... Uh... 30 different services, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube has new movies out now. I have to pay for everything. We forgot to make... Uh, the, only thing, the only thing you can get for free is Brink. 
Exactly. <laughs> we forgot to make plans with Bry, and so I got Netflix just to watch the four episodes of with Bob and David. Oh yeah. So now I've paid ten dollars to watch those four episodes, and I still haven't watched them yet. Oh, I still haven't watched them yet either. We got to get Bry out soon. Yeah, is Bry gonna ever come over? Yeah, let's uh, let's make plans off air. Okay, Andrew Wright. <laughs> we're almost done. Andrew Wright's thoughts on the Super Bowl. Um, I think it should still be played next year. I don't care what people say. Uh, did you find it ridiculous that people got offended by the Doritos commercial, the Snickers yeah. commercial, and the halftime show? So, why were people the Dorito commercial with the baby running out of the uh, the woman's womb? Right, because that got uh, pro-choice people all upset because they're, you know, showing like a, that a baby's like alive in there or some shit. I don't know. Oh, come on. It's a fucking Doritos commercial. And then the Snickers commercial got people offended. Which is the Snickers one? It was the one where it was supposed to be Marilyn Monroe, but it, it was Willem Dafoe in a dress. And that was offensive because... Because people are saying it's transphobic. Holy shit. How big of a stretch is that? It's like you can't show a guy in a dress now without it being transphobic. Like all the jokes with guys in dresses now are just taboo. <laughs> Everything the kids in the hall do is apparently like offensive. Yeah, every Monty Python and kids in the hall episode is now banned. Yeah, you know, here's the thing. I'll accept Bruce Jenner as a woman. Um, we can call her a woman, whatever you want. She's still got a dick. She still was a man. Yeah. Like, it's still a little weird. Uh, we're still not completely over that. We're not completely accepting of uh, the trans. Like, we get to change whatever we want to be. What if What if you had two kids, Jay? Mm-hmm. One comes to you, your, your son, uh, I don't know what your son's going to be. Your son, Abracadabra Jay, uh, comes to you and goes, I want to be a woman now. And mm-hmm. then your other son comes to you and goes, I want to be a frog. Do you pay for both surgeries? I think I just move into the woods and say <laughs> I failed as a human. Yeah, what, what's I know it's not the exact same thing, but like, what is he like? Your one son's like, yeah, gender's kind of on a uh, like. There's a uh, it's on a spectrum, and like, I'm more woman than man, so I want to cut off my genitals and become a woman. And the uh, the other the son's like, oh, I think uh, being human and being a frog are on a spectrum, and so I want to. Be, I'm more frog. I'll say, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have enough money for that. Well, son, you don't have a. I mean, you don't have like gill, whatever the fuck frogs breathe out of. Oh, and you don't, you have a penis, son. So, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I am sure there's like your situation where like your, your child really pre- wants to be a woman, girl, and you want to make them happy. And it's, I don't know. The whole thing is still fucking weird to me. I don't want to mean to be like, uh, I'm, if you need to, if that's what you need to do with your life to like feel better about yourself. And we have to call you a woman now. That's great. I still think it's fucking weird. And I, I go back to be. I go back to being. There's if if you guys can do that, I can be a Chinese woman. Yeah, I mean, I see. I don't get it because in like Bruce Jenner's situation, he still is a dick, and he just said, "Oh my, my name is different, and I'm a woman." I'm like, "No, like you're not really. You're just saying that." But it's not like that's not really what's happening here. It's also when people like accidentally call Bruce Jenner he instead of she, and everyone is like. How dare you do that? Well, she's got a dick, so I see how I can see the confusion. And she was right. a he for the first sixty years of her life, so I can see how people get confused. Right. It's not like transphobia. Oh, I'm scared of them. I'm tra- I have a phobia of trans people. No. That's, <laughs> like, just because you don't like something doesn't mean you're afraid of it. Right. And just because you're like, hey, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I think it's a little weird that you're doing that. I'm, I'm not gonna. Not prevent you from doing it, but it's fucking weird. Yeah, it also doesn't mean, like, I hate them or I hate you. It's just, like, yeah, I think you're weird. So? Do you think Bernie would be less um, less appealing to people if he came out as a woman for the rest of the race? What if he did that after, like, the fifth state they uh, they had the primaries in? Like, in the sixth state. He's just like, I'm Barbara now. What if after getting elected, he's like, I'm Barbara? What would Congress do? I am now... They didn't impeach him. They're like, you said he was a man. He's a fucking woman. This is bullshit. <laughs> Tricked you all. You got your first woman president, Bernie 2016. I'm a female socialist. Ha! <laughs> Republicans' heads just explode. Um, do you think if uh, Hillary suddenly had balls, 
like just actual balls. You like, made it. I actually actually did that. People would like she'd become more popular. Possibly. Yeah. So then everyone got offended by the halftime show too. I I skipped the halftime show. What happened that was offensive? Apparently, it was the most racist thing ever because Beyonce came out, I guess, in kind of Black Panther outfits, and they formed an X, which represented Malcolm X. So they said it was an entire pro-black halftime show, and it was super racist, except that three-quarters of the halftime show was Coldplay, the whitest band on the entire face of the planet. But uh, nobody seems to pay attention or remember that. Also, now I guess shapes of X are. Uh, are let's just go with let's go let's go with the fact that that's what they were doing. So the first, um, I don't know, like first uh, three hundred, two hundred fifty years of the country, pretty pro white. One Super Bowl half them show, kind of pro black. Eh, it balances out. I think we're even. I think they were in Black Panther outfits, but who cares? I can't. Who gives a shit? Like why? Why? Why are you make such a big deal about it? You invite her to perform. You're they already they already. They already it wasn't like she did this out of like nowhere. This was a choreographed skit. Enough people were, were were okay with this, like dance routine. Yeah, it's not like she was like surprise. This is what we're doing. It's not like she was like um, for my next number, I'm going to execute Whitey. Coldplay got three songs. She got one song, and everyone's like going nuts about it. It was like an all black thing. Who is everyone, by the way? Who's going nuts about all these things? Uh, basically half the country, the entire like right side of the political spectrum. Do they send you messages? How do you know about this? I didn't know people went crazy about the, the Snickers commercial with the Doritos. I, it's, it, Is this on Infowars where they, they t- they're they're reporting the fact that people are going crazy? Uh, Infowars went off on the Doritos one. I think I saw the um. Oh no, they they actually they reported that people were upset about the uh, the uh, Snickers one as well. And then I saw a bunch of people post about the halftime show. A bunch of people on Facebook were doing that. Anyone you're actually friends with was was, was uh, like offended? Uh, yeah, one or two people. I was kind of surprised. I also, as far as the football Super Bowl, people are really getting down on Cam Newton for being a sore loser. They want him to come out there and go, "I lost, yay!" Right? Who cares? Who the fuck? Yeah, he lost. He's upset. It was kind of a big thing for him. I wouldn't even care if he like went over the other went over the other team and went fuck you, fuck you. Like who cares? I think he went over. He shook Peyton Manning's hand. Yeah, it wasn't like they're like it, like he said he wanted to win. He was upset he lost. I know, like he that's bad sportsmanship. I expect my son when he loses things to then blow his opponent. Sportsmanship's overrated. Oh my god! Can't you just let him be upset? Yeah. Like what's he? It was kind of a big deal for him to lose that game. You know what was fun back in the day? Rivalries. Everyone wants everyone to be friends now and like shake hands and love each other, and it doesn't make the games as fun. Yeah. It was much better when the the team hated each other. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with him saying, yeah, that sucked. I wanted to win this, and I'm going to try to to win it next year, okay? Yeah. What's the problem? He needs to be the most gracious human being possible. Oh, yeah. When they were beating the shit out of me on the field, that was so nice of them. Those funny rascals when they, they took the, the football from me and scored a touchdown. And they, everything I worked tor- towards for the last year, they just, they just shat upon it. Um, that was wonderful. Stats Guy Third just sent me an article that there is an anti-Beyonce rally planned at the NFL headquarters. Oh, come on. Really? Because that is the most important thing going on in this world today. Oh my god, who shows up for the shit? Can we just arrest those people right on spot? They should do more than arrest. Honey, uh, okay, we're gonna cut cut to the scene. Um, Jay, I know you've been my boss here at the uh, box factory for a long time. I need to. I, I have a personal cause tomorrow, and I need to miss work. Oh, what's the cause? Are you? Uh... You have death in the family. You're getting married. What's going on? Worse uh, or more important. more important. I need to go to a beyond anti Beyonce ra- rally. Sorry, I thought you said you were going to an anti Beyonce rally. Did you heard. see what happened at the Super Bowl when she when she declared black people rulers of the universe and death to whitey right on it was and then she like shit, then she took a shit on Jesus. Did you see that? 
When did that happen? I heard her sing a song about going to the club, and then she went back with Coldplay. Do you want to come with me to the rally? No, I think I'm not going to go to that. And I think anyway, I think I shouldn't have to use a sick day or a vacation day when something this important. I, is this, this qualifies a holiday? You're right. You don't have to use any days because you no longer work here. That's racist. Are you doing that because I'm black? Yep. <laughs> End scene. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't understand why. I don't have people like. I just find life hard enough. I find I have to go to fucking. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired in the morning when I get to work because my kids don't sleep that well. I'm tired at night. Like I, I'm trying to enjoy my time with my kids. I try to like get shit done in life, and I'm try, I try to live my own fucking life. And people are like, have all this extra time to like protest Beyonce. Yeah, where do you have that much time? I don't have enough time to protest. All I have enough time to do is raise two kids, be and and go to go to work like nine to five, nine to six every day, or ten to five, whatever the fuck I work, um, and uh, and do a, and do some some free podcast. That's what I have time for. And speaking of that, we're just about out of time. So two yeah. more questions. Uh, Andrew writes, where's Steven? Don't you know. know there was two, there's two sets of questions this week. Yeah, nobody uh, responded to the first set. Oh, Steven didn't ask any questions? No. And wow, Steven. What's up with that, Steven? Steven, are you getting ready for your anti beyonce rally? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, you call yourself a super fan. More like a super Beyonce fan, Steven. Yeah. Andrew writes, what position would you play if you were in the NFL and NBA? I'd be wide receiver and shooting guard. Um, I'd be a quarterback and a, a small forward. Why not? I'd be a wide receiver and power forward. I'd be owner of the teams. <laughs> that, that's the addition I'd like. I'd like to be owner of the team. I'd like to have that kind of money. Sweet. Um... We have some people that follow our show and they, they're super, we call them super fans because they've said they've gone back and listened to almost every episode of the show. Mm-hmm. Steven is one person that listened to a ton of the episodes. My question to you is, Jay, how do we find a million more Stevens? We do need, we do need a lot more. I would like a million more Stevens. That would be great. If, we could, if Steven, there has to be, there are 7 billion people on the earth. So, a million is uh, a small percentage. A small percentage. <laughs> it's like point oh 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 three percent of the Earth mm-hmm. is a million people. That my math is terrible. Uh, if can't that percentage of people be really into Brink? They want to listen to every episode because that would better, be better than listening to the winning lottery. You'd also get the show five days a week if that many people are listening. If you can just get a million people to listen to every episode of the show going forward, we would do a show five days a week, four hours a day. We'd have stuff prepared. We'd actually like do a lot more bits. It would be we'd have professional equipment. Everything would be better if you could just convince a million more people to listen to our show. All right, so make it happen, people. Spread the word. Okay, so um, if you get a chance, write us a million reviews on iTunes. Send us a million emails. Um and uh, talk to a million people this week about uh how much you like Brink. There you go. We are Brink of Sanity three on Twitter, the Brink of Sanity on Instagram, Brink of Sanity Show dot com is the website. And unlike Louis C.K., we're not going to charge you per episode of the show because we're not assholes. Exactly, they're all free. The Brink of Sanity Gmail dot com is the email, and six three one six seven six one one eight one is the voicemail. And we uh, do all these shows live on Ustream, so you can um, you can watch live. You can chat with us while we're doing the show. There are so many different ways you could see our faces. Yeah, so many. And hear our voices. You could also hit the follow button on Ustream, so you'll get an email whenever we go live, so you never miss a live show. It's Ustream. Never miss a live show, no matter what is going on. It's Ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash the dash brink dash of dash sanity. Wow, a lot of dashes. Yeah. All right. So that's it for today's show. We will be back next week. And that's it, right? We're good? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. All right. Goodbye, everybody.
This is the end. Say goodbye.